Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The seed stock sector plays a critical role in the beef industry. We'll introduce you to some operations that are making valuable genetic improvements to boost their customers' bottom lines. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. The seed stock segment represents the foundation of the cattle industry, the place where genetic improvement actually begins. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the seed stock producers we've met over the years, the ones committed to providing great genetics for themselves and their customers. Now, reaching success in the seed stock business requires a commitment to quality while serving the needs of your customers. Cattleman and Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz takes us to Alabama to meet a family that's achieving both of those goals. CK Cattle Company is a family operation several generations deep. Uh, we've evolved as we've gone along and grown our farm, added members, added land, and just growing the operation to keep up with the family to support us all. Like so many other cattle operations across the country, CK Cattle, located in South Central Alabama, started out small but with big dreams. We started with just a few pairs in 1978. I was operating a cattle operation uh, for my father-in-law. And uh, in 1989, I think we had probably 37 cows going back to those original four. And we were able to continue to multiply it, and it has gone by leaps and bounds since then. We're in an area where uh, there's a lot of open land, so, you know, growing, we, we've been blessed, but it's, we've been able to expand, you know, through leasing land and purchasing land through the years. We're running just a little over 800 head of uh, mama cows right now, and we raise and develop a little over 200 bulls here annually, and we also raise, uh, breed, and develop a little better than 200 heifers here annually. Unlike most farmers in our area, there is no extra source of income. We, we work here on the farm and self-sustain it and make our living solely from the cattle. Good genetics run deep at CK Cattle, both in the cattle and the people, and the family's pride in the legacy they're building is clear. You know, you you got to take the challenges to get the rewards, and the, the rewards is we're raising our kids and our grandkids have been raised in a wonderful environment, and all that I do and I look at it, we're, we'll never be able to slow down. Me and Kate, I mean, we're turning around here, you know, we've gone from one family to two families to three families. There's no such thing as slowing down. You, you're on a fast track, but the, that challenge is worthwhile when you look at the reward of being able to raise your families in this type of environment. There's a great source of pride and pleasure that comes from working with family. It's tough at times, but you got to work through it. Um, and having kids coming up and having them want to go with you first thing in the morning. She's three years old, wanting to wear her blue jeans and go to work. I mean, it's uh, the amount of pride you get from bringing your daughter up to love the land and the cattle. and I'm starting from an early age. I think the thing that makes you more proud than anything is the potential for you to leave the legacy to the next generation. We, we love what we do, we're passionate about it. I feel like we've got the best way of life that there is. And uh, it would mean more to me than just about anything if my children decided one day to come back and get involved in this operation. Using three breeds and the highest performing bulls from cows in their herd, CK Cattle produces animals that fit their deep south environment and their exceptional customer service fits their buyer's expectation. They raise good bulls and we've had good luck out of them. They work good in this part of the country and um, they raise good calves and they work good for us. We're trying to select some of those animals that work really well in our environment. We're at the furthermost point south in the fescue belt and so coupled with the heat and humidity that dirty fescue really works on these cattle and we want to raise cattle that work in our environment and that can handle that fescue as well as our heat and humidity. 
The cowherd is the Angus-based cowherd. Angus is in everything. It's, it's our common neighbor. We've, I've treated the Angus as a maternal breed. That's been my concentration with, with the Angus cattle is, is from trying to make sure the cowherd works in our area. And, and uh, that's been what attracted me to the Angus. I feel like they're very adaptable to the South. And, uh, you know, there's great carcass traits. I'm able to keep my Angus focus maternal because we do use two other breeds to cross with Angus. We use the Simital and the Kin, and we have Sim Angus and Key Angus. I have very deep roots in the Key Angus. The Key Angus has always been a staple here in this operation. Uh, it goes back into the 70s. Uh, Mr. Chuck worked with his father-in-law, Ned Ellis, and uh, they were bringing over some of the first Key and Nina cattle and those Key and Nina cattle were breeding back and uh, they were getting, you know, percentage bulls. The Key Angus bulls have been something that we've raised and developed here over the last 30 years and have been able to sell to our neighbors and commercial cattlemen and feeder calves tend to sell really well here in this area. The calves off their bulls are great, They're big calves good number one black calves, and they bring a premium at sale, so it's a good response. CK Cattle has found success by standing behind what they sell and keeping their customers' needs top of mind. This operation started as more of a larger scale commercial cattle operation, and you know, we haven't, we haven't forgotten that. I mean, that's still the roots of this operation. Although we're seed stock right now, and you know, we raise a lot of animals that will be sold as bulls and replacements, we still have that correlation and that tie to the commercial producer. We understand, you know, where the importance lies in a lot of these operations and what works and what doesn't work. They're a great bunch of people and, uh, they're, I mean, they're willing to work with you and do whatever, help you out any way in the world they can. They do, do such a good job with the bulls. Uh, standing behind them is one of the main things, that I, selling points that I tell to the, our customers, that if they have any trouble out of them, that they will come back and make it good. You know, the customer is the most important thing in our operation. We know that, and we try to have a great relationship with our customers. You know, the CK guarantee is pretty simple. I mean, we live by the golden rule. We want to treat you like you want to be treated. If you have a problem with your bull, we're going to back them. I truly feel that when they buy our bulls, they are buying a product that we have complete faith in, and we stand behind them. CK genetics are on display each fall at their annual production sale, but visitors are welcome any day of the year. We're definitely open to folks coming in and we encourage it. Uh, folks coming in before sale and taking a look at the bulls out in the pastures and getting a good feel for them. We'll, we'll always make time and uh, we'll, we'll always be available for that. From the fescue belt of Alabama, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You can learn more about this great Alabama family, their seed stock operation, and their annual fall sale by going to ckcattle.com. It's a challenge that many cattle producing families face. How do you make room in the business when the kids want to return home and be part of the operation? Brian Baxter shows us how one Kansas family has grown their seed stock business to accommodate the next generation. The Sandhills of Kansas are home to McCurry Angus Ranch, a family operation with roots going back to 1928. Andy and Mary McCurry both knew from an early age that they wanted to be in the cattle business. McCurry Angus Ranch has a long and rich history in the Angus business. We're currently fifth generation with our son and his wife's two young children that are here on the ranch as well. But we're a little bit unusual, even though we're coming up fifth generation. We we're actually, when my husband and I got married, both being third generation, we had no equipment. So you, a lot of generational families are able to come back to operations, but we did our own startup. McCurry Angus Ranch has grown rapidly over the past several years, but the quality genetics of their purebred cattle trace back to the early days on the ranch. The evolution of McCurry Angus really started, I think, when Andy and I got married. He had six heifers and I had one cow. The beauty of that with those seven particular females that we had is that we had seven distinct cow family lines. We actually had them traced back to the Angus Association so we knew the, the lineage of those cow family names. They're all still represented in this herd. In fact, 90%, I think 95% of our herd does trace back to those seven particular cows. So we did the natural growth progress until John came back from college. We make our living off of our cows and so we want our cows to be as good as they can from an efficient reproductively sound basis. Uh, we ask a lot of those cows because we run them 
just like anybody would in a, from a commercial perspective. We don't, they don't get any extra TLC because that they, have to have a, they happen to have a paper. These females are ran in real world, real world environment. I consider we, that we do very diligent uh, research in terms of our AI sires. We use very proven bulls that have daughters in production, established AI sires. Uh, we try to AI as much as we can. At least 80% of our bull sale offering will be AI sired. The McCurry family's success is a story of the American dream, where family members innovate and grow their business to support multiple families living off the land. When John McCurry and his wife Melody decided to return to the family ranch, he got creative in growing the herd size and finding ways to draw in customers for their Angus bulls. We've gone into doing quite a bit more embryo work. What we do is we don't necessarily search out to create an animal that's unique, you know, in terms of just his EPD profile, but what we do is selecting a donor cow is take the high performing, efficient cows that have for year after year calved under 365 day interval, but she's also has a proven track record of creating higher dollar valued cattle from a marketability standpoint. It's the ultimate compliment to have your son interested in doing and coming back to the operation for what, from where you kind of took it from the ground up. So it's also a little bit scary because you also need to think cash flow, he needs to be earning a living with that. And so that's where our numbers really had to grow in order to compass that. But it's the ultimate compliment. And um, you think you know your kids, but when you work with them, you really, it's a true partnership. The seed stock operation hosts their bull sale every year in March, where they offer more than 100 genetically proven Angus bulls. John selects mating combinations to create bulls with muscle, power, and low birth weights. I think our bulls here at McCurry Angus will work for, for most anybody that's after just good sound beef bulls. More recently, we have uh, grasped the DNA technology and so every bull that sells is, has 50K performance data matched into his EPD profile. This year, we have also uh, 50, L, low density 50K to every single cow or female that, w that is in our possession. So now that we have two generations of stacked genomic enhanced EPDs. Customer service after the sale is a big priority for everyone at McCurry Angus. John has teamed up with Superior Livestock to provide marketing opportunities for calves sired by McCurry Angus bulls. We try to offer as many alternatives as we can. Um, through Superior Livestock, uh, we've got the availability of marketing those calves ahead of time um, versus the traditional way. One thing that's worked well for us uh, with John's Bull customers, we have different regional areas of the country where there might be several producers in one area uh, that are using John's Bulls. We can group those lots together. Um, just for instance, you know, here in Reno County, uh, we have a handful of producers that, that are using McCurry Angus Bulls, and, and we had all of those cattle on one sale here this past summer where a producer's got four or five different lots of those calves with similar genetics. Being teamed up with Josh Miller of Superior Livestock is a, a great advantage for our customers because he not only knows the genetics and the cattle that they're trying to sell and, and we team up and try to get a marketing strategy to forward contract these cattle and get customers with similar vaccination protocols or similar genetics uh, from certain regions to market their calves at the same time. The McCurry's dedication to doing things right has made a statement in the cattle industry. Recently, the family was selected as the 2015 Beef Improvement Federation Seed Stock Producer of the Year. That was just probably as humbling a moment for our family as, as we've ever had. Uh, we were nominated through the Candace Livestock Association and NCBA affiliate, and that was probably as humbling as even winning it because the depth of of people and operations in the state of Kansas through all breeds. To be that nominee from this state was one in itself, and then to, then to take it to win that award was amazing. With another generation already showing interest, the McCurry family is committed to innovating while also remembering their roots and looking to the future of the Angus business. I think the differentiating factor for McCurry Angus Ranch is that we are a family-owned, family-operated entity, but we do, I think, have a very unique operation in that we are still maintaining those seven cow family lines for almost 40 years, and then they actually came from our, our parents' operations, too. So um, 
when you're looking for something that's tried and true and looking for a product that can function in a lot of different environments, this is an operation that can do that. Reporting from Kansas, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. To learn more about this fifth generation Kansas seed stock operation, visit their website, mercuryangus.com. Now, it doesn't matter what sector of the beef industry you work in. One of the most important things you can do is join the fight to protect our way of life by becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's easy to do. Just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll tell you about a Kansas seed stock operation that is working to supply its customers with the best genetics possible. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Grass is the center of our universe. We've gotta have a grass program that we can count on and plan on. That's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing, to keep us prospering. If you'd like to know more about NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and have an opportunity to support our effort to create valuable news, information, and education just for cattle producers, then check out our website, cattlemen to cattlemen.org. Seed stock producers have a lot of responsibility. Not only do they need to make money for themselves, but they must also produce genetics that will be profitable for their customers. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck introduces us to a Kansas operation that is achieving both those goals. Next Gen Cattle is located at the eastern edge of the Flint Hills in Kansas. The company was started by four lifelong friends who had a dream of one day working together in the cattle industry. Next Gen Cattle consists of uh, several different entities. Uh, the founders are Mike Curla, uh, Brad Lindstrom, who's a cousin, and Damon Thompson, who's actually my brother. Uh, we have two feed yards. Uh, we also have a commodities company uh, where we trade commodities, as well as a sea stock operation. Amongst all of our career paths that we were on, we decided we wanted to do something different and uh, be together and kind of go about the rest of our life doing something that mattered. And uh, we enjoyed cattle and ranching and here we went into the feedlot industry and kind of backed into the seed stock operation and, and our concept and our ideas. The goal of NextGen is to provide top-notch genetics to help commercial cattlemen improve their operations for the future. The company specializes in beef master cattle because the breed's high-quality maternal traits help customers increase the longevity and sustainability of their herds. When we started NextGen Cattle Company, we were excited to pursue what we could do through genetic buildup and creating beef master animals that had some influence of EPD and performance while maintaining the integrity of the maternal traits that have so long been in the breed. We've been able to step back and you know pick up genetics from a lot of the elite operations around the country. So instead of having a foundation herd that's been around for a long time, we've been able to kind of go around the country and pick and choose different aspects of people's herds that we like here and there and uh, put together what we feel like is a really special herd surrounded around performance. As NextGen looked for a cross-breeding option, they decided Charlet was the best choice thanks to the breed's terminal traits. We think there's a perfect combination between the terminal side with the Charlets and the maternal side with the beef masters. We've been around a lot of big ranches that utilize the Charlets coming back on top of the maternal cross and we've seen some amazing calves and also fed out some really good cattle uh, with that cross at our feed yards and had tremendous success. Us being from the feedlot background and, and understanding the benefits of the terminal traits puts things in perspective here on the ranch when you're trying to breed and breed efficiently and build uh, operations that last a long time. The importance of heterosis to, to the maternal side as well as the terminal side. Heterosis is probably the biggest influence in why we chose Beef Masters and Charlet as our foundation. 
In fact, NextGen is so confident in their genetics, they've established a calf buyback program for anyone who purchases one of their bulls. We will buy back any calf crop sired by our bulls that you buy at our sale. Uh, heifers or steers will take an average of three local sale barns and give you a $10 a head per premium above that average. We'll buy them off your ranch, we'll buy them through the sale barn. Uh, we buy a lot of cattle on superior livestock, so whichever way works best for you. One of the big challenges we hear from a lot of people across the country is I just struggle getting a good value out of my calf crop, and this gives them confidence that they don't have to worry about when it comes to selling their calf crop. They get a call next gen and we'll come work with them on how they, how they get them sold. Our guarantee to buy those calves back is a staple that we believe in our genetics, we believe in what we're doing, and we believe in what they're doing. And if they'll trust in us, we're going to stand by them and have a product that everybody will be happy about in the end. Next Gen's been great to us buying bulls this year. I've been across the ranch with them um, and the rangers looking at cows. And before we bought any bulls, we spent an afternoon over here looking at cows and, and heifers. And it's uh, it made a believer in me. At the end of the day, the founders of Next Gen Cattle Company are confident their genetics have the power, phenotype, and balance to perform anywhere in the United States. We want to create a superior genetic cow and bull crop that can exist in the manner of sustainability. Cows that will produce for 14 years, bulls that will stand up under any environment. So we have customers that come from every different geography that the United States has to offer. We're proud of what we're doing. We're excited. We're very passionate about it. At the end of the day, if we can have an impact on a commercial cattleman, whether he's got 20 cows or 20,000 cows, It'll, it'll make us feel good and, and at least let us know that we're moving in the right direction. Reporting from Paxico, Kansas, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on Next Gen Cattle Company and their annual Flint Hills Classic Sale, visit nextgencattle.com. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what's happening with our show, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos details on upcoming shows, and much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and cattlewomen all across the country. So check us out on Facebook. Still to come on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, see how one North Dakota operation is working to deliver high-performance bulls and heifers to their customers. Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. Thank you to the men and women who continue to provide a safe, wholesome food supply through this pandemic. Beringer Ingelheim is proud to work alongside those committed to putting cattle first. Learn more at BICattleFirst.com. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Building a high-quality seed stock operation takes time, patience, and a solid understanding of where the beef business is headed. Brian Baxter introduces us to a North Dakota family that has dedicated themselves to providing high-caliber Angus cattle to their customers. In the rolling grasslands of North Dakota, Chad and Julie Ellingson and their five children have been steadily building a reputation of providing high quality Angus cattle. Ellingson Angus um, was formed when my husband Chad and I were married in 1995, but our history in the Angus business and the cattle business goes much further than that. Um, it's where my family has been ranching um, since the 1940s with the registered business and my great-grandfather homesteaded and we're excited to be able to um, carry on that tradition and to welcome our children into it as well. 
We're in the northern Great Plains in the southern part of North Dakota. We're in a semi-arid region that uh, gets about 12 to 14 inches of rainfall per year. We've been blessed this year to get uh, about double that rainfall, so the green grass is not normal here. But on most years it can be challenging at times. We live in the land of extremes. Uh, here in the northern Great Plains we can get to negative 40 degrees in the winter time with uh, tremendous wind chills and we can get to the triple digits in the summertime. The real world approach at Ellingson Angus has been shaped by the experiences of both Chad and Julie who've had long careers in the beef industry. Julie currently serves as executive director of the North Dakota Stockmen's Association and Chad has an extensive background in the AI business. That experience has helped them blend the newest technology and cattle selection tools with practical management of their herd. I spent much of my professional career working for the North Dakota Stockmen's Association. I think what's unique about it is uh, by being a rancher myself, it gives me perspective. Um, I, I know exactly what my members, um, what keeps them laying awake at night. I know what's on their to-do list. I know about their hopes and their dreams um, on their operations. And also to be up on what issues are impacting our industry on a broader level, both nationally and internationally. And that helps us here on the ranch at Ellingson Angus engage and be an active part of that process. I was in the AI business for about 19 years. I, I had the opportunity to travel the world and uh, work with and work with and learn from the, some of the brightest minds in the industry. We're privileged to own uh, multiple uh, AI sires along with some major AI studs. Some of the bulls that are currently uh, uh, being utilized uh, across the nation, probably across the world uh, in terms, would be a bull by the name of Ellingson Identity, a bull that would have topped our sale uh, five years ago. He's a proven Cavanese bull, uh, becoming a very highly maternal bull. Uh, we're selling a lot of Cavanese sons of him. By using some of their own AI sires along with a battery of other well-known Angus bulls, Ellingson Angus is able to deliver high-performing bulls and heifers to their customers on sale day, but the Ellingsons never take their eye off the traits that are most important to their customers and the industry. We take a real world approach to raising cattle. We raise cattle very much like our commercial bull customers. Our cattle are out on, on large range pastures. They are grazing about six to seven to eight months per, uh, per year. We do have some supplemental feeding during the winter time when the snow gets too deep for them to, to get out and graze. But we try to raise them just like our commercial bull customers do because then we can call and produce cattle that will suit not only what we're trying to produce, but they, what the kind of cattle our bull customers are trying to produce. I think when we get out and, and I get the opportunity to work uh, with my commercial producers, I realize that they gotta have some performance in those calves. They have to weigh up at uh, weaning time to have some performance uh, at that time and also performance as we follow them through the feedlot. But uh, also compounded with that, they have to have some maternal capability. They have to have structural integrity to get out and cover the land and produce a, a big calf and, and breed back again. On sale day, that functionality is important. As seed stock producers, the Ellingsons know their customers demand cattle that will perform anywhere their buyers take them. Our average bull cell customer would, um, would be a cow-calf producer, um, probably resides here in North Dakota or in the surrounding region. Most of our customers would market feeder calves either at weaning time or maybe 60 to 90 days after backgrounding some. Um, many of those customers also, in addition to marketing feeder calves, would retain some of their own replacement females. They're looking for um, high performance cattle that also have some maternal ability and some stability in their operations. It's very important that uh, those cattle will work here. I think uh, we've, uh, we've had the opportunity to send uh, or sell cattle across the northern Great Plains and actually across the nation. And we've actually shipped embryos abroad. So we've tried to produce cattle that, that will be very adaptable to many environments across the United States. The hospitality and focus on customer service provided by the Ellingsons extends far beyond sale day. They take as much pride in the relationships they've built as they do in the cattle they've raised and sold over the years. We have an annual bull sale the first Saturday in February where we welcome uh, many of our long-term repeat customers onto the seats. Um, it's usually a cold day, but, uh, but we've got a nice heated building and, and it's, a, it's a nice event to get together with, with not only our bull customers, but really our friends. 
we sure welcome visitors at any time throughout the course of the year. Um, we look forward to the chance to getting to know um, potential customers, um, showcasing our cow herd, um, getting, getting to know them and for them to get to know our family. Reporting from Ellingson Angus in St. Anthony, North Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about this fourth and fifth generation seed stock family and their operation, visit the website ellingsonangus.com. The Ellingsons are just one example of the many great cattle producing families we've profiled all across the country. You can find many of those stories on our YouTube page. We also have educational segments, producer profiles, and of course, Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll head to northeastern Colorado for a closer look at a top flight Red Angus producer. Stay with us. We'll be right back. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts. On the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values, ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American Cattlemen since 1921. Hello friends and welcome to the NCBA's Cattlemen's Call podcast. Now the goal of this podcast is to focus on the people in the beef industry. We all have stories to tell. We all have successes and failures, and it's always great to talk about all the hard work that we put in to our operations in our industry. So we're taking the time to talk about what everyone else is talking about for cattlemen and women to share what's on their minds. And make sure and subscribe to the Cattlemen's Call podcast today. Welcome back. Selecting the right bull for your herd is critically important to any operation. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Lane Nordland visits a Colorado seed stock operation that is working to produce top quality Red Angus bulls. On the short grass plains of northeastern Colorado, Kevin and Sally Miller are evaluating their recently weaned Red Angus bulls for sale potential. We run about 250 cows give or take, depending on what Mother Nature provides us. Um, we do it on about 10,000 acres. So if you do the math, that's about 42 acres per cow-calf pair for eight months, because we still have to feed four months out of the year. Because when you look around and you see the uh, short grass prairie that we're in, it doesn't stick around very long. So, um, you know, it's, it's challenging at that aspect, but um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. We have a bull sale every spring, and where we sell 60 to 75 bulls a year. And then the um, bulls and heifers that do not make replacements, we have a small feed yard that we um, will f usually finish them out in the feed yard. That way we can collect the um, genetic data, the carcass data, to um, help improve our herd. Genetic improvement is a priority at Crocent Red Angus, and an emphasis on balanced trait selection helps them to produce the best possible seed stock for their customers. We attack genetics from both sides a little bit. Um, Larry, our partner in this deal, Sally's dad, he looks at things from the feed yard side quite a bit, but I also look at things from the cow-calf side of it a lot, and I deal with the cows more than I do the feed yard. But at the end of the day, we have to meet in the middle and make those genetics work because from a commercial rancher's operation, that's exactly what they have to do. They have to meet in the middle. So we are looking for females that can survive in a semi-arid environment and then be able to produce a calf. A cow has a job description everywhere. And I would say here it is for you to bring bring in a calf every year and to provide a seed stock calf at least two out of three years. And so that incorporates all the genetic component that, that uh, we'll talk about here, but it also incorporates in, you know, growth and, and the other elements that, you know, docility, things like that. And then the other side of it is, is, you know, we're in the beef industry. 
we want to create um, tasty, nutritious products for our consumers. And so that side of it, we look at carcass traits um, very much so. And, uh, you know, marbling is one of those, you know, big ticket items because, you know, that's where the taste in beef comes out. Kevin and Sally's cattle produce and reproduce in environments and with challenges similar to what their bull customers face. Our goal starts with the cows because the people buying our bulls, they need um, some cow herd efficiency traits, you know, reproductive efficiency, um, some feed efficiency as well. But when I sit down and look at the goals of our operation, I think they're very closely mirrored within most of our commercial customers. Within our system, we try to manage them, manage our entire cow herd as what commercial customers would. And so um, there isn't a, a whole lot of added extras into anything. And so I think that's one of the places where you start is, does my system reflect a commercial operational system, you know, as closely as possible? Um, the other thing is, is we collect all the data. I, I have, I'm a spreadsheet monkey and I like data and I like to analyze data and make sure that we're doing the right things for our customers. And so when you look at these bulls, they not only have their year's worth of data back behind them, but they have generations worth of full data back behind them. The collection of herd data from birth to harvest has qualified Crocent Genetics for the top dollar Angus program. This certification provides customers with more opportunities to access higher value markets for their calves. We have to keep creating more opportunities to make a dollar because it's just one of those where you have to keep creating if you, you can't keep doing the same thing all the time or it just it gets stale so we're just keep looking at different opportunities one of the added benefits of um, customer service is is that we will actually provide the enrollment fee for top dollar angus and so when i look at our bull offering probably 45 percent of them qualify for top dollar for last year and so as an added customer service, we want you to be involved in those types of programs because that, that gives you the most dollars back for your genetic investments. When you start looking at the um, backside benefits, you know, you're looking anywhere from five to $10 a hundredweight at weaning time going back into your pocket. And so we want to be involved in those types of programs that create value for our customers. We'll talk with the customer, find out what their cow base is, find out what their goals are with their cows, talk to them about what they're looking for, and go through the catalog with them individually so that they can help pick out the right bulls that meet their needs. Reporting from the windswept plains of northeastern Colorado, I'm Lane Nordlund for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about this family-owned and operated Colorado operation, just visit their website, CrocentRedAngus.com. Still ahead, we'll have the latest from Baxter Black. Plus, we'll tell you about one Idaho operation's world-class genetics and breeding program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In the world of cattle vaccines, when you see fewer reactions, you'll notice healthier cattle and higher profits, too. Because sometimes good protection is about what you don't see. Protect your productivity with cattle vaccines from Merck Animal Health. Proven to cause fewer reactions. You'll like what you see. Our trusted portfolio is just one more way Merck Animal Health works for you. Talk to your veterinarian and visit CattleFriendlyVaccines.com to learn more. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. Cattlemen know how important good genetics are to their operation. Brian Baxter takes us to Idaho for a look at an Angus seed stock operation that delivers cattle that will perform in some of the toughest conditions. 
Just outside Idaho Falls, the sun is rising and the Riverbend Ranch crew is saddling up to gather a set of commercial cows. The ranch's commercial herd has been developed to fit the diverse and often challenging environments on the ranch. Our commercial herd is made up of mostly one iron cows that we've raised here at Riverbend. They're, I mean, they speak for themselves. We try to raise a cow that's going to perform, you know, in all in all types of ranches. We've got a lot of desert ground, we've got some meadow ground, but most of these cattle have to work for it. I mean, so that's the kind of cattle we want. A lot of our ranches will start, like in, on my unit, we start in Dubois and it's all desert, a lot of lava rock, sagebrush, rough country, you know, I mean, we're running, you know, one, one AUM for every seven acres. You know, when we get up into our summer country on some of the ranches we have, I mean, we have some lush meadows. We got 10,000 acres of irrigated meadow up on the Sheridan that we run mostly our stalker cattle. But most of the cows are on, on desert type, rocky, you know, mountainous terrain. So we got to have a cow that's going to hold up in, the, in that environment. Riverbend puts their genetics to the test using their commercial herd as the ultimate trial for their seed stock genetics. Their cattle must perform and thrive in the conditions that many of their customers make a living on. The big reason we run a commercial herd is, is to prove our purebred cattle. I mean, this is real life, you know, cows out here and doing what they need to do, what everybody else does. Not everybody raises purebred cows and, and we prove it with all of our bulls and what they do and what they're capable of right here on our ranches and in real life scenarios. We expect the most out of all our females. I mean, they have to be sound. They have to raise a good calf. They have to be able to mother on their own. We can't take care of them. We're too big and too spread out to be able to put everyone in, in confinement. I mean, if they're not sound or they don't raise their calf on their own, they don't raise a, a good calf on their own, they don't stay in the herd. However, proving performance doesn't mean anything if the cattle aren't sound and productive, and Riverbend is steadfast in their belief that cattle must be physically correct in order to do their job. We look for good feet, we look for size but not too big, a real moderate bull that's got good structure that can travel. So a lot of our customers, you know, they kick their cows out, kick their bulls out with their commercial cows, and I mean, they've, a lot of them have to travel. So if you don't have good feet or good legs, then it's not even worth it. Well, it means everything. I mean, we, with the bulls we use, the cattle we run, I mean, watching our bulls and how they hold up on this kind of country, the, you know, the desert ground and, and even the mountainous country, we see the difference in our, in our bulls and the way they hold up. With all the choices available in the bull market, the team at Riverbend believes their proven genetics can make a real difference for commercial cattlemen. In fact, their commitment to customer service, coupled with their management strategies, led to Riverbend being awarded the 2016 Certified Angus Beef Commercial Seed Stock Producer of the Year. We got a lot of confidence in what we're raising here, and we got a lot of confidence in, in the way they're going to perform. So, I mean, we're willing to stick our money where our mouth is and, and, and want to see our genetics out there for everybody else to be able to use them too. It's a big part of, big part of our customer service, I mean, philosophy to show to show what we can do with the same cows we're trying to sell to every other guy that raises a commercial animal. I mean, we're out here proving it every day and we want them to be able to do the same thing. I think we've got the best, the best going. I mean, if you, if you take a bull, say you're, you're not at the sale, you buy a bull, they deliver it, you don't like it, it's fine, we'll take it back, we'll replace it with something you do like. In addition, Riverbend offers a customer investment program. Confident in their genetics, the Riverbend team will be there to bid on customers' calves when they know where and when those calves will sell. Reporting from the high desert of eastern Idaho, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about Riverbend Ranch and their annual bull sale, visit their website, riverbendranch.us. Still ahead, it's time to check in with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere, reimagined by you for you. With improved visibility, better maneuverability, and more ways to customize so you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. At Leachman Cattle, we're committed to building more profitable cattle. 
As a third generation seed stock producer, our family has been in this business for over 80 years. Today, we have the best technology ever to build more profitable cattle. Our dollar profit index is a leader in the industry to help you balance all the traits that drive your bottom line. Give us a call or go to www.leachman to learn more. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. IMI Global is here to help you do just that. The heart and soul of veterinary medicine has always been the laying on of the healing hands. The gentle doctor, those private practitioners who dedicate their lives to caring for the animals in his or her community. They do the daily grind to keep the horses sound, beef and pork on America's table, and our cats and dogs alive and well. I'm sure they occasionally dream of a big fancy animal clinic where they didn't have to work weekends or nights or ache all the time, or maybe they'd get to spend some time with their family. But then they wake up. Today in the world of modern vets, I've lost my place in line. My colleagues have prospered as specialists in therio or swine. I see their achievements in magazines, their articles in print. They've developed a brand new cure for warts with after-dinner mints. Or they're recognized as a final word in matters so complex, I can't pronounce what they're working on, much less what it affects. I spend my days at the back of a cow, usually up to my chin, in the process of pulling something out or pushing it back in or I'm trying to pass a catheter to move a calculi when the cat is tearing my arms to shreds and spraying my good time. But I'm thankful I've got a good practice with loyal clientele who, in spite of my vast shortcomings, still try and speak of me well. Why, just last week, two farmers were talking outside my clinic door. You know, Doc ain't perfect. But for our little town, we couldn't ask for more. Yes, I'll agree, the second one answered. I've given it some thought. With Doc, you always get your money's worth. But he don't charge a lot. This is Baxter Black from out there. Up there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you each and every week. One reason to become an NCBA member is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become an NCBA member. Just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. We're back with more right after this. Stay with us. Now a BQA tip from the Beef Quality Assurance Program. It's really important for cattle producers to assess their cattle handling and National BQA has a tool to do that. No matter if you're a feedlot or a cow-calf producer, they have a national BQA assessment manual that helps you identify some handling issues that you may have when processing cattle through a chute. So if you can process at least 100 head and mark every time an animal slips when they come out of the chute, if they vocalize in the chute before a procedure, if they run when they exit the chute, use an electric prod on cattle. All of those situations indicate that we have some area and room for improvement when we're handling cattle during processing. So BQA's assessment guide helps you go through and look for those components that you would like to mark down when you're processing cattle to make sure that you can make improvements where necessary or continue doing good work where you see that things are going extremely well. 
Find out more about beef quality assurance at bqa.org. When it comes to the beef business, there's no room for gray area. The decisions being made in Washington affect the future of the beef industry, the livelihood of your fellow farmers and ranchers. Your National Cattlemen's Beef Association knows there's what benefits cattlemen and there's what doesn't. To us, it's as clear as black and white. Visit joinncba.org to learn more. Welcome back. We're wrapping up the show with legacy photos as we share some great shots submitted by our viewers. Let's take a look. Want to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Either message them to us on the Cattleman to Cattleman Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.